Hello, everyone. We've just started and we already have 120 people. Pleased to meet you all as always. Uh, we'll be waiting for approximately two minutes, then uh, we'll go for a brief slideshow and then go to the content of the webinar with uh, the actual product use cases. 240 people so far. And some familiar, familiar names as always. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Brian. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Dave. Hello, Giacomo. Hello, Harry. Yes, hello, John. Hello, Charles. Hello, Ennis. Yeah, so it, this does look like we have people from all over the globe, which is awesome. Approaching 300 people so far. Yes, hello, Battle. Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Cedric. Hello, Bogdan. Yeah, hello, Fabrizio. So yes, we've uh, approached 300 people. So I suppose we can start. Uh, there are people who have already attended our webinars previously, so we're more or less familiar. There uh, are many names that look new to me. So for those of you uh, that aren't familiar with us, we're, we are Social Links. I am Ivan, an OSINT analyst at our company. And today we will be talking about uh, use cases of open source intelligence and uh, specifically automated tools and analytic systems. Uh, in uh, the context of use cases for uh, corporate security, more specifically due diligence and fraud prevention. So we will start with a brief slide overview. So yes, the key facts uh, about us, uh, the company was founded in 2015. We have uh, 80 plus employees right now, and the headquarters in, is currently in the United States. Uh, currently, we serve more than 500 clients globally. Around half of that is in Western Europe, but in other macro regions, all in all, uh, 50 plus countries. What our products do is assemble massive volumes of data from open sources, including social media, messengers, cryptocurrency, blockchains, and what is commonly known as the dark web to analyze and visualize a holistic picture for streamlining data-driven investigations. Uh, we um, cover the full cycle. So it starts with data extraction, which is possible uh, for several, several hundred different data sources. Uh, we then process that data uh, using uh, some, uh, AI modules, such as facial recognition and uh, natural language processing. We visualize it in a structured way, uh, in either in uh, the Multigo or in I2 Analyst Notebook. And then the data is to the specific use case of the customer. There are a number of use cases uh, that are uh, common to corporate security. Of course, uh, it's a much wider topic, but uh, here we're going to talk about OSINT in uh, the, con the context of CorpSec. That's due diligence, contractor checks, background checks, uh, financial fraud prevention, asset tracing, brand intelligence, and competitive intelligence. Inputs can be quite different. 
Uh, they could be emails, phone numbers, IP addresses in some instances, personal names, usernames, organizational names, cryptocurrency addresses, or geolocation. So now we can go to the actual use cases that we will be discussing today. And we will be showcasing those within Multigo. So uh, first, this is a logical schema of the kinds of corporate registry lookups possible. Um, we can divide those into regular cases, day-to-day uh, -day routine stuff that involve mostly conventional sources. And uh, the sources that we have that are applicable to that is Open Corporates, uh, the British company's house. Uh, then the user uh, can sometimes go into specific local registries, which we can also sometimes add if uh, this uh, is coherent with development logic. And then uh, there are different kinds of cases uh, that uh, with which the user can utilize less conventional sources. Uh, in uh, this context here, I'm risk stuff mostly with high value targets. So what can be used for that is, for instance, OCCRP Aleph, uh, Sanctions Explorer, which we have integrated recently, and the ICIJ Offshore Leaks database uh, is something that uh, can be put into both of those two categories. Now, uh, as there is quite a lot of people here, uh, we assume that uh, many of the individuals present are, we're not previously familiar with our products. So first we will go over our general Sockman functionality, and then we'll gradually move on to the corporate sources. For instance, we have a certain digital identifier as an input, in uh, this case, a phone number. The first thing that we can do uh, is uh, try to launch those transforms, or if we're working within i 2 analyst node queries, uh, to see if there is any social media presence associated with that identifier. Among uh, our sources, the, so the socials are all real time. Uh, we also have the social links inner database, which makes this uh, specific kind of task somewhat easier. So far, uh, we see the fact that there's a Facebook account connected to the phone, and we see an uh, SLDB entity of an individual named Mike Dell. So now we will make an extraction from that. And depending on the output, move forward, forward within this graph. The extraction uh, gives us a Facebook ID an email address and a picture. Yes, we have also extracted a WhatsApp profile uh, from which we can reverse search an image if we want to. Now we will do the same with this email, the same what we did with the phone. and we will get the Facebook account from the ID. The email enrichment uh, gives us an account within Gravatar. Uh, also, we see that there are accounts tied to it within Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. Uh, some output from a Google query, uh, 12 emails with similar passwords, and an IP address. The most interesting here, of course, is Facebook. So the next logical thing that we will try is apply facial recognition to look for the presence of this individual within other platforms. And also extract some general overall details uh, from FB. I'm sure there will be questions on the way. Uh, we will be answering those during uh, a Q&A session 
closer to the end of the webinar. So whenever we use facial rec, we're given a probability rate of uh, this being uh, relevant and not a false positive. In this case, uh, there is the same photograph as in Facebook within Instagram and similar ones within LinkedIn and Twitter. So we will also extract some data from that. And uh, what we have now as a result from the phone number in just a few minutes is the overall presence of uh, this individual uh, within the social media space. So now maybe we want to know more about them. Uh, we can go into most of the directions that uh, we have here within the graph. Uh, but in this instance, let's try the Facebook account. We can, of course, try to get uh, the uh, individual's uh, friends, the people they've studied with, their rel relatives. Uh, but another way uh, would be to get their content and the content related to them, such as the photos they've been tagged in, their posts, their posts on our pages and the ones that they have been tagged in, and by the same way with the videos. So next, we choose the objects from the output. And for each of those, get the offer, commenters, all the comments, details, reactions, and reposts. Now, as uh, the second iteration, we will take all of the resulting comments that we currently have from, this, from those content artifacts. And for each of the comments, also get the offer, reactions, and replies. Yes, so there is a question uh, whether our product only works within Multigo. Uh, no, it also works uh, within i2 Analyst Notebook as well. Uh, everything that uh, you currently see is already set into the software. And uh, if the user wants to personalize them, that would depend on the request. If uh, it's an enterprise customer, then, uh, uh, well, that's a different option, but uh, Multigo in itself is somewhat customizable. Uh, those transforms are not built in within Multigo. They're not part of uh, the standard Multigo functionality. So now the next thing that we can do 
is choose all of the Facebook accounts that we currently have within this graph, and we're only working with Facebook here, and extract the details from them. Uh, no, the features are uh, relevant, not just for social media. Uh, our segment part is strong, of course. This was, a, this was our key focus for a long time, but we also have corporate registries, uh, dark web, cryptocurrency, blockchains, inner databases, and some uh, custom extensions with third party vendors. Now, as the viewlets within Maltigo can be uh, quite useful within uh, social network analysis, uh, we can try to see which entities could be called the most important within this network, uh, such as, uh, for instance, the other Facebook accounts that have interacted the most with the input one. So based on this, we can perhaps assume that uh, they are closer to them in real life as well. Now, uh, again, to go to the corporate registries. We'll start with the company name. A person uh, is also something that we can use, a standard person entity. The first one that we will cover will be the British company's house. So here we get a company. We see some of its properties, such as its ID and address. Then next, we will extract the address, get the person with significant control, and get the officers of the company. Now we'll choose the company's house officer entities, and from them, get the appointments and companies with significant control. Now, as a third degree, we will do the same operation as we did uh, the first time with uh, the other resulting company's house corporate entities. I must say that uh, the registries that we have, they comprise a category, uh, so they all work by quite a similar principle uh, as it is with social media as well. So now we see the most uh, frequent addresses and the most frequent individuals that are within this graph. Now, uh, this is focused on the United Kingdom the next source that we will uh, showcase will be offshore leaks, which is focused on island jurisdictions such as uh, Panama's, uh, Cayman Islands, BDI, uh, Seychelles, and Cyprus. So we have a company name again. This is based on the data sets of the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. We get a company entity from those from that we further go to the related addresses, intermediaries, and officers. We see Credit Suisse Channel Islands LTD as an intermediary. 
And we see several officer entities, one of them with an open name. If we want to know more about them, uh, we can go into social media, but there is also a source uh, that we have among others uh, called Document Cloud. And it can produce a lot of informational noise, uh, but it can also sometimes produce quite uh, interesting results as well. Such as in uh, this case, a passport, uh, which uh, wouldn't always be the turn of events, of course. Uh, and I must say that, of course, uh, offshore leaks is more relevant when researching high value targets. Now uh, we can come back, come back to the initial person that we were researching. For instance, we see a LinkedIn company here, Centera Gold Incorporated. Uh, let's imagine that uh, this looks interesting to us and we want to know more about the company. We can use among other things, open corporates, which uh, covers organizational entities worldwide in uh, very different kinds of jurisdictions. Now, we won't be able to extract the officers, but uh, we can get the general info and link uh, linked companies in some cases as well. So we see that uh, this is a Canadian entity. Uh, most of those records have the same address, but there is another one stated to be the previous name of Centura Gold Incorporated, Kumtor Mountain Holdings Corporation. Uh, this is a bit different from uh, the other things that we see within the graph. And now we're approaching another topic, which is an all round data assessment of an organization. So this involves the social media layer, the corporate registries layer, uh, the network objects, uh, so the domain and network infrastructure, uh, DNS records, and so on. And uh, we can use quite custom methods, especially for social media. So first here, we have the phrase Kumtor near the location where the company is located and all of the uh, Facebook media objects uh, within 2022. So we'll search for photos, posts, and videos. Another thing is the Twitter advanced search. And here we will go from a hashtag and everything that had this hashtag within Twitter within the time span of from 1st January, 2021 to uh, the 2nd of September, 2022. There is also the Google advanced search where we can really narrow it down with uh, excluding certain things, uh, narrowing down the language, uh, querying a specific source or looking for specific file types. Uh, now we're going to do a very simple thing, which many people quite frequently do, search for PDF files uh, with uh, this specific phrase. Another thing that we have here is the Maltigo circular area entity with uh, the GPS coordinates of the organization and the radius set to 300 meters. Based on this, we can search for social media activity within uh, the span of sources available to us within that radius. The next thing is the company entity from which we can run queries into all of the corporate sources which we've previously shown. And also, for instance, into LinkedIn and use a custom Google query as well. 
Another thing here is the domain name for which we can use uh, one of the extensions available within a cell pro uh, provided the user has uh, the relevant API key, which is census. And there is also the phrase entity. Uh, we can create several at once, but uh, here we'll limit up ourselves to just one phrase and uh, mentions of this phrase within various sources. Next, we can expand in uh, the different directions. So for instance, from all the Twitter content, uh, get the offer hashtags used, likers, mentioned profiles, replies, and retweeters. And of course, it would uh, make sense uh, when we, either when we get all the results to put different kinds of data from different kinds of sources into several separate graphs or work on several separate graphs uh, from the beginning. So we see another related entity, which is the chemical corporation. Uh, we see some addresses. Uh, we see from the census output that uh, the company seems to be based in uh, Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, at least its office. Uh, this is an operator of one of the largest uh, gold mines within Central Asia, uh, which is owned by Centura Gold Incorporated and uh, uh, this was the central point of a number of uh, major socio-political events within the life of this specific country. Now, another source that we've added quite recently is Sanctions Explorer. Uh, this can work with companies' uh, names of uh, aircraft and vessels and names of individuals. We will select all of those and run an exact search into Sanctions Explorer. Next, we'll take the child entities and we can extract the timestamps from within those. Uh, all of those objects are in one way or another related uh, to a network of shell companies operate, uh, operating in the interests of uh, the DPRK. Uh, we can see that a lot of them, uh, for a lot of them, the last update of the sanctions, or at least of this list, uh, was uh, in the second half of August this year. Uh, for some of them, it's a bit different. Uh, the source goes back as far as uh, the early 2000s. Uh, another uh, specific source, which is, uh, I, which I suppose most of you are familiar with, and which can be quite good for those use cases as well, is the 
uh, publicly available uh, platform developed by the international journalist community, uh, which is OCCRP Aleph, also integrated into SL Pro. So we can run that. And we can run a simple Google search as well. We see that all of those objects have a certain intersection uh, related to either the documents uh, within Aleph or to the Google output uh, related to the Naftaran company. Uh, which set up those shells uh, within Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia, and Switzerland to bypass uh, the sanctions by the American Office of Foreign Assets Control. And uh, this is uh, quite iterational, but this does require uh, a lot of clicks. And one of the ways to automate this is with the use of machines within Multigo. Uh, machines can be developed for uh, a range of different custom scenarios. For instance, now we will try one that will do a company lookup into several sources at once and then uh, extract uh, some of the properties from within the results and then do a second degree enrichment. These are built with the help of the Maltigo scripting language. This is how this one would look. So uh, yes, I see that there's uh, quite a bit of questions <laughs> and we can start answering them now. Is there any uh, free trial? Uh, so yes, Maria, thank you for the question. Uh, if you want to get acquainted more with our products, uh, then uh, uh, you can shoot an email to uh, the address that we have on our website, and we'll be glad to discuss this in more detail with you. Uh, yes, James, James, hello. Uh, very, very pleased to see you today. Uh, what is the best method to report on this massive amount of data? Uh, the best method here, I suppose, would be uh, to first uh, either well, there could be two approaches. We can first gather as uh, much data as we possibly can from all of those sources and then do the filtering, or we can apply the queries uh, very carefully uh, to li limit ourselves and limit the output. Uh, and if we're generating a PDF report, it would make sense, of course, uh, to leave just the most important bits. Uh, does it work on uh, private set social media accounts too? Uh, we're only working with publicly accessible information. Uh, so if an account on Facebook or Instagram is, pri is set to be private, then we won't be able to pull as much data from it. But if we have the account itself, then of course we have at least the name, the Facebook ID uh, and in most cases, a profile picture, which can in many cases be a photograph. So that's something that we can further work with uh, to find this user on other platforms and further deepen that direction. Can our product be adapted to extract data from other platforms similar to open corporates? Uh, yes, open registries are something that uh, we can add. Uh, and Andre, very pleased to uh, see you as well. 
we can uh, set up a call to discuss this in the near future. Is there any kind of functionality like red flag check uh, that would depend on the specific red flag in the use case that your organization has? Uh, well, I suppose that the fact that a company being listed on the source such as Sanctions Explorer could be called that. Uh, but if uh, a red flag is when the entity needs to match a specific criteria, then uh, we uh, can set this within the script within the Multigo machine. Can we also query Edgar from the SEC database for financial connections? No, not at the moment. Is Multigo included in our platform or do we have to buy the Multigo license separately? Uh, the Multigo license need to, needs to be acquired separately. Of course, uh, from each of the entities uh, that we've seen within uh, the demonstration, we can go to the specific source from a link within its properties and see how it looks on that actual source. So this is company's house. This is how uh, the aforementioned passport would look on document clouds. This is the Centera Gold profile within open corporates. This is their website mentioning the Kumtor gold mine. Uh, this is the statistics section for uh, DPRK within Sanctions Explorer. This is the result for uh, Nafti Run Intertrade uh, search within OCCRP Aleph. And uh, this is the page uh, with uh, the documentation to the Multigo scripting language, which I will share now for those of you interested in the chat. Is there any Maltigo source list and is it public? Uh, yes, the data is uh, publicly available within the, the Maltigo Transform Partner Hub. Can the platform be used without Maltigo and I2 Analyst Notebook? No, not at the moment. Uh, yes, there will be a recording of this session available further on our YouTube channel. Oh, thank you very much for the kind words. Could we elaborate more on the blockchain capabilities? Are we able to trace crypto transactions? Uh, this is a bit out of today's topic, uh, but uh, yes, we can show an example of how this would work. Just a minute. So we're not as focused on uh, the cryptocurrency capabilities as vendors who specialize in that. Uh, we rely on a third party data provider called BitQuery. Uh, it doesn't have the feature of red flagging of specific addresses, but we can see the relationships that they have. Uh, we can map out the transactional graph and then we can use the functionality that we have for social media and dark web searches to see if the address is mentioned anywhere, if so, in what context. Uh, here we've been able to uh, attribute, I don't know if we can use that word in this context, uh, a number of addresses uh, to groups engaged into militant extremism, uh, onion space vendors, uh, several legitimate exchanges. 
If you want to discuss this in more detail, as mentioned previously, uh, please book a demo with us. We'll be glad to see you. The other platform to use SL Pro is I2 Analyst Notebook, Brenda. Uh, this information was uh, searched live and uh, all of the searches within uh, the mainstream social media sources are done in real time. Uh, thank you for the impressive presentation. Thank you very much for the kind words again. To answer your first question, we are compliant with the standards. And if we're using kanji instead of English, uh, then there wouldn't really be uh, that much of a difference. It uh, can be kanji, it can be hangul, it could uh, be uh, Middle Eastern languages. As long as the data that you're querying is available on the specific source, you will receive an output. So yes, how useful is this in transnational crimes where we only have a piece of unverified information uh, in the sense that public info is not enough? Uh, this can be useful in terms of us uh, having the widest possible uh, variety of sources uh, within the different categories, within the different domains. So we can look at a certain, a certain objects from different perspectives and enrich it to the maximum of our capabilities. Can we share a bit how to make custom extensions or any settings from dark web or blockchain to get the most out of entities extraction? Uh, yes, certainly. And I, there were some other questions about dark web as well, which also uh, goes out of the scope of today's uh, topic, but we can uh, showcase how to use a machine for that specifically. So uh, this is a piece of data that uh, I've been showing to several of our customers previously. So one of the inputs for our dark web searches could be aliases. Uh, in this case, those were the alias of uh, an administrator of one of the European marketplaces within the Tor network. So now we will use a machine that will enrich the aliases uh, using the sources that uh, we have available within our dark web functionality. Can Maltigo get the result for SIGINT? Uh, no, because, well, not really, at least not in uh, the spectrum of use cases that I know about. Uh, it can be used as a platform for visualization and the analysis uh, of uh, SIGINT actions. What are our favorite Maltigo transforms to combine with the cell transforms? Uh, that's a good question, uh, but uh, I don't know if uh, favorite uh, is mm, the correct word here, but that really depends on the use case. Uh, so for people in cyber, I suppose threat and tell platforms would be uh, more relevant uh, for people uh, working with corporate sources, uh, something uh, like OCCRP Aleph or several other paid subscriptions would be more relevant. That's the good thing about Maltigo. It's quite customizable to the individual use cases. 
Uh, Maltigo can uh, Maltigo use is not exclusive to uh, law enforcement Turkeys. It uh, can be used by different people from the private sector as well. And thank you for the mod. Uh, thank you very much for coming today. I think the show uh, started, Paul. Yes, uh, I, I agree with you. So please launch the poll. Meanwhile, uh, yes, what did you think of the webinar? Uh, was it useful or okay, or you didn't learn anything new? The second question is, are you planning to implement OSINT solutions at your organization? The third is, would you like to have a demo of SL Pro to see how it can help you in your work? And the fourth is, does your company have a dedicated budget for purchasing an OSINT solution this year? Uh, now, there was a question about dark web sources, and uh, we've used the machine on those aliases now. And this is a, the degree to which uh, those kind of iterations can be automated. So we first get the accounts, and then we get the other entities related to those accounts, which would be posts and threads for the forum ones and related products for the marketplace ones. Uh, yes, there will be a recording of the webinar available on our YouTube channel. Uh, yes, the best alternative app uh, for Maltigo that I know is uh, i2 Analyst Notebook, but I don't know if uh, they're quite similar, mm, but uh, there are some differences, of course. But uh, in general, there are benefits of using Maltigo and there are benefits of using Analyst Notebook. Actually, uh, from what I see now, uh, there is 72 questions. I don't think there is a way uh, for me to be physically able to answer, that, answer those within the time span of the next remaining 10 minutes. So for those of you uh, who have a lot to ask, who are interested, uh, and uh, who would like to talk in more detail about our product, and see how it can be tailored to your specific use cases, we highly encourage you to go through the poll. Uh, and then book a meeting with us in person. As mentioned previously, it will be great to see you. Does social links have machines within Maltigo? Uh, yes, we have some of our own ones for enriching uh, basic digital identifiers, uh, companies, and uh, dark web inputs. Thank you, Serena, very much. Uh, yes, we do capture live data within our social media searches. Thank you, Tamadara. Uh, so, yes, there are still some people left. Uh, our webinar is coming to an end. Uh, again, we highly encourage you to go through the ball. This uh, will be very useful feedback for us. Do we also cover news? Uh, yes, uh, this can be done in the form of getting either Google outputs or the major social media uh, accounts of uh, news outlets.
Uh, no, we don't pull litigation histories at this moment. Uh, what we're limited to is the court record, just the court records available uh, within OCCRP ALF, I'd say. Yes, Andre, and we hope to see you again as well. Thank you, David. So yeah, so far today we've co we've covered uh, what we have for corporate sources. Uh, we've also gone a bit into the Sockman part and what we have for uh, dark web and uh, cryptocurrency analysis. Uh, the demonstration was mostly product based, and we do understand that corporate security is not purely about OSINT, and OSINT is not purely about using automated industrial solutions. Uh, but we do our best uh, to create something uh, that can make this uh, faster, easier, and more efficient. And of course, we do understand that uh, there are different ways to combine those methods. Thank you, James. I'm very glad to hear that. So yes, uh, I suppose that uh, we can end the event now. Uh, we will be launching another one on uh, some of our newest product updates. Uh, we promise that uh, it will be quite interesting. So we hope to uh, see you in the nearest future as well.